In this video, we're going to look at what QuickBooks calls reminder statements, statements to customers that um, uh, owe money but haven't paid yet, perhaps need a little reminding that, uh, uh, that they need to get that check in uh, and get that, those invoices paid. So if we look on the uh, home page here, you, you'll see the statement charges. That's not what we're talking about. QuickBooks uses that term where it, it's very specific uh, usage where you can charge a customer for something that goes directly on the statement. No invoice is created. Don't see that used. Uh, I was going to say very often. Actually, I can't recall that I've seen it used uh, at all. But it is there, and it does have a use for certain service type industries that have recurring charges and don't want to create an invoice for each of those. The kind of statements that we're talking about are here. These are customer reminder statements in QuickBooks. And if we wanted to create those for our customers, I would just click on this icon. And we have several options here. One is the statement date, and that's important because if you uh, use the incorrect date there. If it's picking up something from a previous work that you've done and you're looking at the statements and it doesn't appear that all the charges are on the statement for a certain customer, it could be that it's because this date needs to be reset here. So keep an eye on that. There are two types of statements. So this is a, a statement for a certain period for uh, November 16th to December 15th. So this is a statement that looks a lot like a credit card statement. There'll be, if, if there is a beginning balance, that beginning balance will show us a line on the statement. Any activity during the uh, this date, between these two direct date parameters here, so in the, the uh, month that's covered, uh, and then a, a total balance at the end. So, that's one type of statement. The other is all the open charges, regardless of date, on that customer's um, account. This gives a little bit more detail. So even if an invoice is uh, you know, a little over a month old, whereas it would show as a beginning balance in this type of statement, here it would show as a separate line with the invoice number and the information as far as due date and um, depending on how you set the parameters, even what was purchased on that invoice. So you could, um, you would have that on this type of statement here. And actually, I see this type of statement used more often. Uh, the problem with the beginning balance type statement, which is what I call this, is that you will sometimes get calls from customers and say, well, what's the, what's the beginning balance? You know, what's in that? So you can answer that question just by using this type of statement. But whatever works for you, you have the, the options there. Ordinarily, you would pick all customers. That When it says all customers, it means all customers that have a balance that should be getting a statement. But you could pick only certain customers. You can come down here. You can print a statement for one customer if you would like to. You can make that selection here. There are a lot of options here, and I won't go through all of these, but just a couple of uh, more commonly used ones that I'll note. Show invoice item details on statements. Sometimes customers will use that, and if you have a really long invoice with lots of items, you probably don't want to get all that detail on the statement. It might make it kind of confusing, but if most of your invoices are just a couple of items, you could show that detail uh, on the statement. You could, if you know, I, I don't have never worked with anyone that had so many statements to mail that they wanted to uh, combine those by zip code or or uh, print those by zip code, so they could they could be uh, bulk mailed. Uh, due date on uh, transactions. Uh, don't want statements with a zero balance. You can get those if you have open items. For instance, you have a customer that has. A hundred dollar invoice, and they also have a hundred dollar credit. If those two things are not applied to each other, QuickBooks still sees that as an open invoice, and will continue to create a statement for that. You could um, prevent that by using that option there to uh, not print statements with a zero balance. Um, 
no account activity, uh, inactive customers. Yeah, I don't know about inactive customers. Generally, I don't like to make inactive customers if they have any kind of a balance due. Uh, sure, some customers need to be dropped, maybe that have a balance due. But I have another video on the channel here about how to write those invoices off as a bad debt. So I generally clear those customer balances off to zero before I make them inactive. So those are the main uh, parameters there uh, as far as setting up your statement. You can preview what they're going to look like. You can print them. If you have email addresses uh, in the customer file for your customers, you can also email them. And it's a great way to remind customers that there's still the balance due. Yes, they got the invoice 30 days ago, but they haven't paid it yet. And we need to get that money in. So that helps give them a little bit, uh, little bit of a reminder there. So I hope that was helpful. And uh, thanks for watching.